Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm gonna show you how to make the ultimate Italian fried peppers. They are probably one of the easiest things in the world to make, but no doubt about it, it's one of the most delicious things in the world. It just literally requires red bell pepper, lots of fresh garlic, just extra virgin olive oil, and salt and pepper. Now, when I tell you I make these for every party that I have, every event, I have to make these because they're requested by so many people and I feel like I would be letting them down if I didn't make them. Now all you're going to need is some fresh, beautiful bell peppers that I've sliced. I'm going to do one here. I just cut it in half. There's no seeds in this one. Look at that. Left out. Give her the core and the seeds and the little white veins in there. No need to have that. And then you just slice them up like so. Couldn't be any easier, but I have to admit, one of the best things I did with these peppers, I had my cousin come over with her fiance for dinner, and I was making, um, I was making chicken cutlets with these on the side. My cousin's fiance says, oh, I know I don't like peppers, and I put the peppers on the table while I was finishing up the chicken cutlets. I said, just try one. That's not gonna hurt. By the time I was finished up with the chicken cutlets, I went back to the table, I had like no peppers to serve. And Matt is sitting there with his bread, with the peppers, going to town with no one else at the table. They're that good. Because when you cook them well, they intensify in flavor and become really sweet. Now with the garlic, we're not gonna slice it. No, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna whack it with our knife, just like that. And I'm just gonna take the skin off, just like so. Cut the bottom off, I don't like that little woody part. And this is how I'm going to leave the garlic because when I cook it all together, the garlic gets so sweet and so delicious. It's not strong and garlicky, it's just heavenly. And I feel like that's one of the best parts about this dish is the way that garlic turns out. So I'm just going to peel the rest of them, go to the stove, and start cooking up. I have a large nonstick skillet here preheating over medium high heat. Now to this, I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil. And when you're making a recipe like this, you want to use good ingredients, and I'm using my Olio Beato de Marco from my friends at Olio To Go. And I'm just going to put about a tablespoon and a half in here. And you want to make sure your pan is not too hot because when I add the garlic, I want to infuse the garlic in that olive oil. And in order to do that, I have to bring up the garlic to temperature with the olive oil together. Otherwise, the garlic would brown, it would give a lot of, little flavor, not a lot. So I'm just going to turn this down to medium. And I'm going to let that go for a few minutes until it's really fragrant and the garlic starts to turn a light golden brown color. Now after a couple minutes, this is what the garlic should look like. Now another really important step to this is you want to make sure your pan's nice and large because we're trying to saute these and get a nice color on them. We're not trying to steam them. So that's perfect. I'm going to season this with salt and pepper. Just like so. I'm going to leave this at the medium heat, and I'm gonna just toss these around and cook them until they're brown and just delicious and soft, and they have really dark brown around the edges. Look at these. Can you see that? Look at that. Look at that garlic right there. It's like sweet deliciousness. Look at that. Ah, and they smell divine. I let these cook for about 30 minutes. I know it seems like a lot, but look at this. Look at the color you get. They caramelize by just releasing their natural sweetness. And it's the kind of thing you won't get if you're cooking them for five minutes, you know? That's what we're looking for. They are perfection. And like I said, you can serve this over a side of chicken cutlets or pork chops or fish or whatever you want. But personally, I need nothing more than a bowl of this, a piece of bread like this, just tear off a piece which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I can take a bite of it. And I want this one. And I need that piece of garlic right there. Because it's like sweet candy goodness at this point. It's a little hot. I don't want to squirt it over my mouth. But it will be worth it. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Mm, mm, mm. One of the best things in the world are these peppers. I know it sounds silly because it's just a few ingredients, but when you cook something right, they just taste like themselves. They taste like they're supposed to. 
If you're looking for that perfect side dish, you have a few peppers left over in the fridge that you don't know what to do with, make this recipe. I guarantee you there'll be your go-to side dish recipe. I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with me. My mouth is watering, so I'm just trying to like stumble upon my words. To get this recipe and other recipes, check out my, my website at www.laurenthekitchen.com. See you next time. Bye. I'm going back for more. Today's Twitter question comes from Mara Posner. They asked, where did you learn to cook? I learned to cook on a very little teeny tiny homemade wooden stool at my grandmother's house when I was itty bitty. Because unlike my mom that I love dearly, she, my grandmother has a lot of patience. So she popped me up on her stool and she, very first thing I learned how to make was gnocchi. We had this little um, gnocchi board that you roll the gnocchi on and I never forget that as you roll them they have ridges so it kind of if you don't do it fast and you don't do it right it kind of hurts your finger so I was getting them all wrong my finger was hurting the whole time but I did not complain I wanted to sit next to her and I wanted to just keep on rolling and that was really when I started to just love cooking because to me it represented what I really believe in which is cooking is more than just fuel it's something that satisfies your soul now remember, if you have a question you'd like to see answered on my show, tweet me at Lara's Kitchen, and don't forget the hashtag, Lara Vitali.